of Royal Conobo. I am the creative director of Noble and Sex. We're a bespoke clothing line for men and we've picked a niche in corporate attires, suits, shirts, pants, ties, and currently we've added to the line African designs and traditional attires. We just want to give the African man a taste of his desire for soft schedule. They have, I, I would explain this from two sides. The first one is being able to dress on like Jidena doesn't just happen on the streets. You, you're not just sitting somewhere in your atelier or your shop and you just get a call come and dress to Jidena. Um, so I'll just walk you through the story of how we got to Jidena and why and how it, it has been able to grow the brand. We, um, we got the opportunity, uh, Jidena came into Nigeria and um, for some reason he had some issues with his luggage. That's why the fact Jidena definitely will have all his clothes put together. So um, at the time, the people who brought him in were looking for the best of the best and um, they had mentioned a couple of big names in the industry. Uh, but someone in there was like, oh, he knows a couple of guys who could probably do something. So we got in there, when we got there, we were about four tailors trying to take his measurements, um, everyone giving their own time frame and all of that. But we had always believed in fast fashion because, um, like I said, when it comes to branding and it comes to fashion, they will always tell you, you could choose one of the two out of these three. You're talking about affordability of price, you're talking about quality and talking about speed of delivery. And we've always been able to, we've always wanted to combine the three of them into one. So we took Jidena's measurements by in the morning, went to bring the fabric by around three o'clock, we rushed back. Between the time we took his measurements and the time of completion for a full suit, it was um, six hours we used to make it, but we divided it by the eight hour because he had um, some um, meeting or something he was attending to and he was wowed. By the time we brought it to him, he was surprised because a bunch of big names had come and told him you get it in four days, five days. Some of them said they'll ship it to him. So it was more like more or less like this young boys from nowhere coming in and delivering and he was shocked. I have a video of him even saying it's the fastest bespoke suit he's ever gotten in his life. Now, coming to how it's affected the brand, definitely when you dress an early setup like that, people tend to see that, oh, you guys actually mean, mean business. So it's gone a long way, it's been able to push us to a particular level where we want to play. Um, people have always reached out saying, oh, you were able to dress this guy, and I'm sure you'll be able to dress me. It's also been, so it's also had this downturn where people get to know we dress today and feel like, oh, these guys are just too pricey. But that's not the case for people who eventually get to find out that we actually have affordable pieces with quality and we also deliver timely. <laughs> Okay, I'll start with market development. Um, well, we, we initially found a niche in corporate wares and um, the, the attires around that phase, but we soon realized that we're African, so we definitely want to export our own design. So we added to our, um, our culture, we added African attires and uh, traditional designs from Nigeria and Africa. And um, when it comes to market development, we realized, like I said, that the people over there, overseas and diaspora, want what we have, so they want our local content. So I can tell and I can say for a fact that the future of Africa and the future of fashion design in Africa has to do with us being able to express the art in our ways and for us to be able to export it, with, whereby we fulfill three things that are very important. Quality, price, that's affordability, and at the same time, speed in delivery. Usually they'll say you can only pick uh, two, but we feel like if Africans decide to put all of our efforts into it, we could definitely improve the market development for fashion in Africa. Then you mentioned uh, competition. Um, when it comes to competition, uh, healthy competition is, uh, is encouraged because if we compete within ourselves, but we're competing for a bigger price, we're not trying to just own the Nigerian market, we want to own the international market. So if Noble and Sex is competing in healthy, um, on healthy um, standards with other brands like Matafo and the likes, then definitely whenever you get to see um, Matafo, Noble and Sex or whatever brand on the international market, you know you're looking for quality. So it actually pushes us to do better as different brands. On to profitability. Well, um, business, de um, business in its uh, holistic view is based on creating value and cre getting profit at the same time. Um, we've looked at it from the perspective that when it comes to Africa and uh, fashion design, it's highly important that we actually do the business prof um, do it properly so it can be profitable. The fashion business is actually very profitable in Nigeria, and I will explain reasons why it is in Nigeria and also in the world. When you look at man, 
Man's basic needs are food, clothing, and shelter. Now, it shows that uh, based on statistics here, yeah, the average man will eat between maybe two or three times a day, and the average man will also buy a piece of clothing once in three months as against shelter. So it's, it's, it's a need, and definitely people will always patronize as long as you give them quality and give them affordability in due time delivery. I'll say you can look at it from two ways. You can look at it from that perspective, or high-end clothing isn't just high-end for nothing. It's high-end because it combines quality alongside the price, and you're paying for quality and design. Now, we are in a phase where you don't necessarily have to, um, how do I put this? You don't necessarily have, have to need something. I'll give an example. People feel like you don't need high clothing, meaning you don't need quality, you don't need all of that that we put in when it goes into high clothing. But we're in an industry where, at this point in time, we need to let you know that you need it. So, I will tell you this. You might be working in whatever sphere of life and you feel you, maybe high clothing would be a want. But I can prove to you it's a need. Because um, you have to look as good as what you sell. If you're working in the corporate industry, you definitely want to look good. Because if you're trying to tell someone to bank with you, you're the person in the bank. You have to look like you're bankable. So high clothing is actually the future. So as far as I'm concerned, it's, uh, it's, it's based on perspectives. So high clothing is actually a need if you look at it from the proper perspective. I would say, first of all, it, it, uh, it depends on everyone in Nigeria. It depends on all arms, the government, the private sector, and even we as Nigerians ourselves. First of all, we have to embrace what's ours. Um, I also um, ask that the government um, empowers um, bodies like FADA. Um, if the government empowers FADA, FADA will be able to empower other fashion designers, and it, it will actually give FADA um, a bit of relevance in the fashion world. So everyone has to probably register or whatever. But I'll go on to say that um, for us to be able to play in international markets, we have certain challenges that we have to face, first of all. Um, Nigeria, as at um, some time back in the 80s, 65% of the white collar, or the jobs rather, were from the textile mills we have. Right now, we barely have anyone that's functional. We actually used to make our own fabric. Here in Nigeria, right now, we have to import everything from Turkey, neighboring countries, and all of that. And um, it makes it more expensive, it makes it hard for you to get quality, and it limits the level of variety you find in the market because of the cost. So if the government can actually help, help by means of um, either giving grants to companies who are interested in investing in fashion, um, probably even creates, um, maybe going to PPP, public-private partnership, with people who want to run meals in Nigeria, create, fa um, create fashion-related items and accessories, and also, um, also bring down the import tariffs on fashion-related items because we, we barely create any here. So I feel if we can get quality in all those things I've mentioned, buttons and all that, and variety, definitely we'll create pieces that will actually do great work when it comes to the international market and people will actually recommend and actually purchase. For African fashion brands to become competitive globally, um, certain things will have to be put in place. This goes beyond just the government this time. Now, the fashion designers should have, uh, have it in, at the back of their minds that when you're creating a piece and um, you say you're an African brand, you're a Nigerian brand, you're representing a nation. So you don't want to create something, make a mistake and say, mm, he'll manage it. Mm. If we have that spirit of excellence in what we do, definitely competing in the national market, competing globally will be a piece of cake. Because we, if you notice something about Nigeria, Nigerians, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just walk you around something. Fashion is an extemporary or is an, is an expression of art in its own, its own, in its own um, term. And um, when the colonial masters came into Nigeria, they were impressed with the level of art we had. They looted some of our artworks and even took it abroad. It shows that the Nigerian mind, or the African mind, is actually not as backward as many would think. So if everyone can adapt and adopt that as a mode of, a mode of thinking or um, a place to draw inspiration from. It means when you're creating a piece, you're looking for excellence. When the, the thread goes out of line, you're trying to ensure you're redoing that piece. I personally can count how many, and we also have to bring it down to customer service in Nigeria. I've done a suit for someone four times just because the person has certain issues. Because I'm trying, and in, so in doing something four times for someone, you can tell already you're not making profits. 
But you're trying to go the extra mile to ensure the person has the best of experience. If everyone in Nigeria takes that up as, um, as a, a motto or a slogan or a mantra, I'm very, very sure definitely we can compete in the international market and will be recognized globally for what we actually do in Nigeria and also in Africa. So um, this goes out to you out there. You're a male, you're a guy, you're looking at getting really nice pieces. You, whether it be corporate, whether it be traditional attires. I'm Harold, creative director of Noble and Sex. I'll show you that if you actually work with us, we'll actually give you not just what you want, but will satisfy your pension for certification. You can reach us on our website, www.noblandsex.com. That's spelled N-O-B-L-E-A-N-D-S-E-C-K-S.com. You can also reach us on the, some of the numbers that are probably shown on the screen, uh, provided by on the video. And on Instagram, you can go check out our work we've done for a bunch of celebrities, not just Jidena, but also we've done for RMD. We do for high-end politicians. We've done for the Speaker, I just say House of Assembly. We're doing for a bunch of other people who probably don't want their names mentioned. We've done for people, Lebanese. We have Lebanese clients. We have international clients, Indian clients. And so we definitely, if we could satisfy those guys, we're very sure we could satisfy you. So reach out to us. What are you waiting for?